going to tell you a little story about uh, myself and a friend called Fear, actually. Uh, you know, I'll just uh, catch up on what he said. Um, so the, the, the topic here is about what we fear in life. I think most of us fear, that well, most of us believe in this equation, the fear of losing is almost more than the expected value of pleasure. Now, the concept of expected value, I'm sure if you have studied econ economic statistics or mathematics here, the concept of expected value is very uh, vague in itself. So this is how we normally think about happiness and satisfaction. It's a normal distribution of thinking. If it's a bit more mathematical, please uh, pardon, my, pardon me for that. But 99% of us think that the fear of losing and fear of failure is bigger than the expected gain of, of satisfaction and pleasure. So we remain here. We just fine, we are happy, don't touch us. Uh, that's the most of the population in this world. Then there are some people who dare to think outside the box, I'd say, and those are the guys who, who experience pure satisfaction, a pleasant satisfaction to an extreme. It could be right or wrong, it could be either way. Um, so fear of losing what? Fear of losing a nice apartment, you know, river views. Uh, fear of losing that. Uh, for the ladies, fear of losing that. And for the guys, fear of losing that. Um, there was a point when I had all of these things, uh, and I lost them. Why did I lose them? Um, well, I failed for seven years. Before I lost them, I failed for seven years. This used to be my screensaver in front of my computer. I had 16 screens, and I used to work with 600 sheep. And every day, same job, uh, same thing, make money, make money, make money, take the same train. I had five suits, same color, navy blue. Uh, the shirts were a bit different, the ties were almost the same, you had to wear red or pink or you know, it's city stuff. <laughs> so I failed for seven years of losing everything I just showed you before this. Now, um, and I knew it was not going to be easy to actually let go of these things. So I had a choice. I had a choice to live life like that. I you know, drink lots of champagne and vodka and whiskeys at nightclubs and spend thousands and thousands of pounds every day. Or opportunity to actually figure out what I wanted. There's one thing I always say that you actually don't know what you want unless you start doing something because you will start learning about yourself. Um, you actually, when you're in a job or when you're in a status quo, you don't know what you actually want. So if you start somewhere, you, you, know, you start with the low hanging fruit and then you can't climb the tree up and then finally you'll actually see what you actually want. That takes a bit of time. So it took me a bit of time. Uh, summer 2012, um, I, well, it was February 27th, 2012, when I woke up, I was in my bed, 7 o'clock, I had the best day before that, I had the best night, I made a lot of money, and I was sat on the bed, and I asked myself one question, and the question was, can you do this, or can I do this, whatever I'm doing, for the next 40 years of my life? And that's the only question I asked myself, and the answer was no. So I slapped myself, and I went to bed, and I woke up the next morning. My, my boss called me and you know, it was, a, it was a bit of a nightmare, but anyway, so, so I thought, okay, let's do something, let's, let's start a product, let's create a product. And there was an opportunity at that time, uh, which was in the holiday business. Uh, there's a company called Airbnb, I'm sure some of you might have heard about it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to start a little competitor in Europe. I didn't, I didn't actually understand the magnitude of that company or what it can do to the market, but I started it. So I had a bit of savings, that's one thing which was going for me. So I started a company, I hired a lot of people. Yeah, we were a team of 12 people in a startup. Everyone who used to come to the office, they were like, wow, that's the coolest and the you know, most expensive startup ever. <laughs> Probably not the way to do it, not the way you know, to actually spend 100 grand, 150 grand hiring people. And, uh, happened. I lost money, fine. And then I realized this is not going to work out. It's just too small. There are a lot of competitors. There's a big market. So I had to lose my flat, I had to sell my car, um, I moved into, um, into a cellar, um, I, I got a derelict pub, a lease on a derelict pub, I did, did it up from upstairs and downstairs, so the office is upstairs and I live downstairs, there's no light. And, and then there was a little hope, an investor was very interested, so he said, okay, well, I'll put some money in, but of course all the good things, they never happen. So he said, okay, I have to invest that money somewhere else, so thank you very much, Baba, and that's it. So my company failed. But at that time, what I realized was that I had lost fear because I'd, I, I'd seen everything. I, I, whatever I had, I'd already lost. Here, I had nothing to lose. So the option was to actually keep on going. So I think the best way to lose fear is to fail in whatever. But to fail, you have to start something. 
So then, since then, we started a company called 400, which essentially, so what we learned here is that, you know, it's not, it's, not, it's not in vain. What we learned here was that this market was saturated, but there was an opportunity in, in concierge, in aspiring luxury travel. People wanted to go to villas and, you know, in groups and save money and travel business jets if they're 80% discount, and I'll tell you about that. So we started this company, and since then, it's been a couple of months, and you know, it's, there's interest, interest, there's community being built, there are sign-ups, you know, people, people are interested because it's something different. But I learned about that from my failure. So you fail, you lose fear, and then you're successful. There's no other way. Uh, next. Um, so this is what we are now, what we do now. We have a company called 400. It, it curates, aggregates, aspiring luxury villas all over the world. So essentially, rather than uh, going through hundreds of websites, you have one website where you have the best listings, hand-selected for groups and affluent travelers. So, you know, if you go in a group, it's 100 pounds, uh, less than 100 pounds per person per night. Yeah. Aggregation of last minute and flash deals, no one else does that at the moment. So, you know, when you get deals, like, you know, you have a week empty, you know, you get 70, 60, 70% discount sometimes. Then we have a concierge service so that you don't have to actually talk to 10 people, you just talk to one person and get, get the job done. Um, this is what I want to do. Uh, I want to open the doors of a, of a thing, a concept called collaborative consumption, where you know it's two peers and they're connected to new travelers, new market, which has not been done yet. So the aspiring luxury people who can spend money don't go onto Airbnb and they talk to you know different people and book a forty-pound room. They need to talk to someone on the phone. And groups, that's a big problem. I mean, you don't really know. The only thing you do is you Google and you find hundreds of websites and then you contact hundreds of people and you might get something. So that's the aim, and this is what we are, you know, focusing from the, I'd say six months from now on. So there are half of the half of the business jets in Europe are flying empty, and then there are villa last minute sales. So we're going to aggregate that. We get sixty to seventy percent sales on jets. Then we get ten to thirty percent sales on villas, and you're talking about getting a package. One week south of France per person, thousand pounds to fifteen hundred. It is expensive. I'm not saying it's for everyone. But you get to travel in a in a private jet and you stay in a villa, so that's the idea, uh, with a medium to long term. Uh, I'm going to end with this. Um, this is uh, I, I really believe in this slide. Um, I think it's never going to be easy, whatever you do, um, because you will probably fail 99% of the time. You'll fail, but then you learn a lot. But if you fail, that will kill creativity. I mean, everyone here is creative. Everyone knows the art of creation. But it's that fear which will kill what you actually want to do. It will make you unhappy. You don't realize that, but it will make you unhappy if you if you are afraid of it. Um, it will not let you do things. It loves the status quo, and I really hate it. Um, and it will let you be to, you know be normal. So if that's something you want to do, fine. So the only way to kill fear is to actually start doing something you actually love. Forget about failing or losing. Because the process of learning is so important that if you don't do it, it's never going to come to you. Success is never going to come to you. You have to dig a hole. I mean, this is a cliche, but you really have to dig a hole to actually fill it in. So I will leave uh, this thought with you, is that what is actually, what is your fear of losing? Um, is it losing a job? Is it losing a flat? Is it losing a car? Your girlfriend, boyfriend, Louboutins, you know, uh, Armani suits? I mean, you never had them before. So I mean, you know, these things, you know, you should stop talking, or stop thinking about these things and move forward to actually what you want to do. I leave it with that. Thank you.